Mrs. Chandra Reddy, Helen, Sandhya, Prashant, and the entire Reddy family and friends. So many beautiful words and so eloquently have been said by the speakers before me, and I want to thank all of them. We are gathered here this afternoon to say our final goodbyes to a person who deeply cared about Fiji, its people, and its future well-being. For those of us who believe in the National Federation Party and the principles it espouses to make Fiji a better nation, this is one of its saddest times. We have lost a leader and a statesman whose vision and wisdom set the cause of not just our party, but for all our people of Fiji. Justice Jeram Reddy was a man who deeply influenced many of our lives. And that is certainly true of me. Mr. Reddy has had a deep and lasting influence on my adult life. In the, Lenny, in the early 1980s, I remember when I was a young student at the University of the South Pacific, and Mr. Reddy was the leader of the opposition. He was then in his 40s. He was youthful, energetic, thoughtful, and already an intellectual, and a man of different quality from those around him. For young people with an interest in politics, Mr. Reddy was clearly a man to follow. He was a natural leader in an era of ethnic politics. Mr. Reddy was already looking for political partnerships with indigenous Fijian parties. And so was born the NFP Western United Front Coalition in the 1982 general election. It fought and it came close to winning that election. I and many of my friends were drawn into NFP's 1982 election campaign. This was our first direct experience with politics, and it was undoubtedly Mr. Reddy and the exciting new direction in which our party was moving, which drew us all there. Some of us will recall Mr. Reddy's dramatic departure from Parliament in December 1983 in protest at the actions of the then Speaker. And I remember a group of us from the university were so incensed that we left what we were doing and headed for the government buildings to see Mr. Reddy and show him our support. Many have spoken of Mr. Reddy's legendary oratory in both English and Hindi. This too, I remember very well. During the 1987 elections, we would go to political meetings just to hear him speak. His passion as a speaker was magnetic, but his words were also wise. He spoke not to entertain, or to bluster with false promises. He spoke to advise and persuade on principle. Mr. Reddy already had a vision and destination for politics and leadership in Fiji. Looking back at some of the events that followed, I am honestly not sure that enough of us understood it or were willing to understand it. And many of us in this room will know 1987 changed everything. And again, it was Mr. Reddy in a 1989 political meeting who, who spoke to us. And he demanded that instead of lining up outside foreign embassies for their visas, that young people should stay and fight for democracy, fight for human rights, and fight for the rights of those who could not leave. Mr. Reddy was 25 years older than me. 
Ours could therefore never be a relationship of equals. It was a relationship from my side of deep personal respect. Time spent with Mr. Reddy was always inspiring and insightful. It is easy to forget that these were deeply challenging times. We were faced with the divisive, unfair 1990 constitution, but Mr. Reddy was working quietly through dialogue with Mr. Mbuka to overcome it. But few of us at that time believed it could be done. And I recall very vividly meeting Mr. Reddy in 1996. He told me that he and Mr. Rambuka had a good understanding and that they trusted each other. He told me that he knew that they would succeed. Mr. Reddy trusted Mr. Sitivani Rambuka. I trusted Mr. Reddy and that was good enough for me. History tells us, my friends, that they succeeded. Mr. Reddy and Mr. Rambuka worked together to produce the 1997 Constitution. And let us pause for a minute and consider the enormity of this achievement. Mr. Rambuka was Prime Minister. He led a government elected under a Constitution that suited him, perhaps. In pure racial terms, it favored the indigenous community. Why should he accept a new system of government that might be fairer, but could and did bring about his political downfall? And yet, Mr. Rambuka and Mr. Reddy succeeded. In 1997, the House of Representatives and the Senate voted unanimously to bring in the new constitution into force, based largely on the report by Sir Paul Reeves, Professor Bridge Lyle, Mr. Tomasi Vakatora, sadly now all departed but not forgotten. My friends, there was no military decree. There was no imposition by force. There were no hidden secret advisors or devious agenda. Instead, there was a national dialogue. The Reefs Commission traveled throughout the country. It listened to the people. It regarded their views and produced a report. And two national leaders persuaded their followers that this was the best way forward. Through dialogue and a growing relationship of trust, two leaders worked together to persuade the people the representatives to vote united together to bring better government to our country. This was the power of democratic leadership in action. The people were not bulldozed, bullied, or patronized. They were not threatened. They were not dictated to. The people of Fiji were persuaded. Then we headed to the 1999 elections. I was one of NFP's candidates because Mr. Reddy invited me to stand, and I could not say no. We know then what happened in the 99 elections. Despite the unanimous democratic vote in parliament for that constitution, the people rejected its proponents. For Mr. Reddy, principles and ethics came first, before short-sighted political gain. History reminds us that Mr. Reddy paid the price as others who opposed him successfully placed political expediency before principles and fairness. We also know that Mr. Rambuka and his SBT also paid the price with many indigenous Fijian voters and ethno-nationalist groups for his grand gesture towards multiracialism and cooperation with Indo-Fijians. Mr. Reddy believed in sacrificing for the common good of all our people and for the peace, progress, and advancement of our nation. Indeed, he made huge financial sacrifices to pursue a sense of true nationhood. At one point in time, he was in charge of the biggest and most prominent law firm in the country. But he gave it up because he didn't believe in paying lukewarm attention or mere lip service to what he had set out to do politically. 
to restore equality, dignity, and justice for all our people. History, my friends, give us perspective. And we know now that the 99 election result was not the critical achievement of that period. The 1997 Constitution was the achievement. National reconciliation was the achievement. Bringing our people together was the achievement. I was to have many more encounters with Mr. Reddy after his return from Arusha, having successfully served as a judge of the United Nations International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda, where he made a name not only for himself, but for Fiji and the entire Pacific as a whole. But one such encounter in 2013 was life-changing. I met him at the NFP headquarters in Suba, where he asked me to assume the leadership of the party. I cannot say what Mr. Reddy saw in me. Perhaps he also saw in me a common understanding that politics is not a pastime. It is not a hobby. It is a calling. It is a duty. Once again, I could not say no to Mr. Reddy. How could I say no to a man who sacrificed so much? Almost his entire life, who had left a private life, who had left the successful profession he loved, to assume the burdens of national leadership. And let us not forget the true mark of leadership. At the darkest time, at the lowest ebb after 1987, Mr. Reddy did not leave. He did not quit. He stood his ground and fought. He fought for equality. He fought for justice and fairness. He fought for democracy. And together with Mr. Rambuka, they succeeded in achieving a milestone. Mr. Reddy fought using his unique, absolutely unique, outstanding gifts, his wisdom, his intellect, his vision, his power to reason, and his power to persuade. He had the power to forgive without forgetting. He had the power to understand that if Fiji was to have a brighter future, it could not stay tethered to an unhappy past. This is the most enduring mark of this great man. This is the legacy Mr. Reddy has left us. And this is why, my friends, he will never be forgotten. I say to you and to all of us, that Mr. Jairam Reddy's life is a beacon for us to meet the great challenges of bringing back Fiji, those dear things that he fought for, democracy, rule of law, decency, respect for one another. His vision for Fiji lives on. Mr. Reddy would have been pleased to know that his vision of the major ethnic groups in Fiji respecting and working together with one another also lives on today. Together with Mr. Rambuka, I provide this assurance that his vision will soon become a reality. On behalf of the National Federation Party, its members, supporters, well-wishers, and the many thousands either watching the service via live stream or paying tribute in their own way, I extend to Mrs. Reddy and the family a most sincere and deepest condolences on their irreplaceable loss. While we understand your personal and deep sense of loss, Mrs. Reddy, please take comfort that the name of Justice Jairam Reddy will live on in the annals of Fiji's history as one of its greatest, most respected, and principal leaders, and one of the finest statesmen of Fiji. May Justice Jairam Reddy's soul have eternal peace. Goodbye, Mr. Reddy. Goodbye, sir. Thank you.